Hello everyone, it's good to see you again today. I am going to be reviewing Defy the Stars by Claudia Gray. First off, I am so glad that this book is a trilogy, or part of a trilogy. It stands alone just fine with on its own as the first book in the series, and all the major plot points are introduced and wrapped up, but there are like one or two tiny ones that weren't wrapped up, and I'm curious to see how they go. In addition, seeing the dynamic like between Abel and Nomi, that's what I'm going to call her, I'm going to call her Nomi, seeing the dynamic between those two is really nice. Watching a synthetic human grow into a human and seeing a very religious person with a little bit of an agnostic streak question herself and then these two becoming friends and something more later even though they never truly put a put a label on their love and it's definitely love i enjoyed reading it and i see i'm scared to read the next book because i love the character so much and gray did such a good job that the second book maybe she'll ruin it I don't know. I'll probably still read it because it's a good read. But now I need to get to the part where I critique the book and say what I really liked in a more depth, depthful way and what I didn't like. So from a writing point of view and from a structure point of view, this book is very formulaic. They go here, they encounter an obstacle, they overcome the obstacle, Something breaks down the door and they have to fight it. Then they make progress, then they encounter an obstacle, then they get over it, and then something breaks down the door. In that way, it's very formulaic. And it's almost comforting, you know, to know kind of where something's going to go. But what makes it refreshing is that you don't know what's going to break down the door next. Every time I thought I knew what was going to go on, nope. It just completely turned and there was a completely different thing that broke down the door or a different obstacle. Some of them made sense. Some of them I kind of saw coming. But it was, there were quite a few shocks in there. I think it just barely straddles the line between perfect and a little bit too formulaic. But it's an enjoyable read and I will definitely be recommending this to other people. I mean, that's the reason I'm doing a review and that's why I'm putting it on YouTube. It's, you know, that. This book made me reconsider the idea of downloading my brain into a machine to live on forever-ish. The way it works in this universe is that to Build a machine capable of holding a human mind. You have to make a machine. You have to program a mind into it and let that mind basically develop its own soul. And if it is done <clears throat> correctly, if it is done successfully, then you have to scoop that soul out of the machine and put your, basically your soul into the machine. That, in my point of view, feels a lot like murder, and I'm not okay with that. This book is surprisingly free of trigger warnings. It has... Prostitution is mentioned twice, and it's always... The, well, the first time it's mentioned, they get heavily discouraged from using it, and another option is, is given for the problem, which I'm not going to spoil things too much. And the second time it's mentioned, it's treated as a, is that your response to, for everything? It's like dismissed a lot. Um, there is one character death, but it's not graphic. Let's see. It's definitely heart pounding, but there's no language. There's no, no sexual assault. I had no religious qualms reading this book. It, it made me think a lot, but it treats, it treats our world very respectfully, but then leaves its own mark 
in a way. This time I'm not going to be reading a passage from the book, but I will be sharing my favorite quote from the book. My favorite quote comes from Abel, the male protagonist, as he's contemplating his life and the life of his creator. It's in the last like three chapters, four chapters of the book. He says, it isn't hard to leave life behind once you've lived a life worth living. And that really struck me. Yeah, we all have to grapple with our mortality. We all have to grapple with dying one day, but it's only the people that have regrets about their life of, oh, I should have done this. I should have done that. I shouldn't have let fear take over. Those are the people that have the hardest time transitioning from this life to the afterlife. The ones that didn't leave anything behind, they made an impact, they did some cool stuff, they left no stone unturned. Those are the ones that when they get to the end of their life, they're like, yeah, that was enjoyable. I'm, I'm good now. Peace out, guys. <laughs> the one tiny cliffhanger that they leave you on, and it's like honestly nothing in the grand scheme of the book is there's an illness called cobweb, and it bothers me that we get we discover the origins of the disease, but they don't do anything with it. We don't get a resolution. But, I mean, she had to leave room for the opening of a trilogy, so... Which, I just found out this was a trilogy a couple minutes before filming this, because I wanted to check and make sure. I would hate to critique a book and say it was incomplete and come to find out later that the author really did continue to expound upon it. Well, this is the book Defy the Stars by Claudia Gray. I highly recommend this book. I, there is no price on this book. Oh, there it is. $17.99 US. Yeah. Yeah, I would, I would say that's worth it. This book is definitely worth the price tag. Uh, I got it from the local library, but if you just really enjoy buying your own books, definitely would recommend. It is five spaceships out of five, very family friendly, and I hope you all get to enjoy it one day. I'll leave a link in the description saying where Miss Gray's website is, and where you can leave a review of it on Amazon, where you can buy it on Amazon if you like. You y'all can just give those click down in the comments below. And thank you for watching. Have a good day.